What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Investment Tea Clause. My name is Tevi, and this is a channel dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information, stay for the fun clips. Today, having some ice cream, we're going to head to Austin, uh, check out here in Texas. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit crypto, obviously the big news of the week. Uh, the London fork for Ethereum has gone live, and we can already see uh, the benefits of that going uh, through the roof realistically. So when we come back, we'll talk crypto, we'll talk Tesla, and going to enjoy some ice cream. Pretty cool scenery here. <coughs> Loving it. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Ethereum is off to the races, and it's great timing too, considering I was wondering how to integrate the pictures I took when I went go-kart racing. Definitely a great time with family, and even better because it was partially paid for using my Coinbase card. Had some fun, and earned Bitcoin back as a reward. Nice. But anyways, back to the Ethereum and the London fork. That network upgrade has been highly anticipated, and was finally implemented earlier this week. Its goal? is to bring more stability and predictability to the network transaction fees, increase transaction speed, and take the network one step closer to ETH 2.0, which will be utilizing proof of stake when it goes live sometimes next year versus the current proof of work. To keep things simple, one of the biggest advantage Bitcoin has or had over Ethereum up until now was the fact that Bitcoin has a limited supply of 21 million tokens, which makes it deflationary. Ethereum, on the other hand, sees a current annual token issuance rate of 4%, or around 4%. EIP 1559, which is one of the upgrades rolled out with the London Fork, addresses the inflationary aspect of Ethereum. With EIP 1559, part of the fees that would have been paid to miners prior to the upgrade now get automatically burned with each and every transaction on the network. This also means that coins will automatically be removed from circulation after new ones are issued. This essentially ensures that the 4% annual token issuance gets nullified and counterbalanced. And basically, if the burn rate is greater than the token issuance rate, price appreciation gets a boost from the supply reduction. At the time of this recording, ETH is trading for over $3,000, which is a solid $500 gain since implementation. To give you a sense of scale post-upgrade based on the network activity, Ethereum was burning about $10,000 every minute on the 5th of August. That accelerated to $12,000 every minute on the 6th of August. And on Saturday, just two days after implementation, $30 million worth of transaction fees have been burned out of existence. Just insane. This reduction in supply and increased network usage is helping Ethereum regain momentum and push for higher highs. It is important to note, however, that the current burn rate will not continue at this pace forever. It will normalize over time as the network scales up, but for now, it's a nice tailwind and, you know, couldn't be any happier about that. So what's next for ETH? Well, according to Red Capital, now that we've broken through the $2,770 resistance, and managed to close above 3,000, there will be, and I quote, there will be little resistance ahead until the old all-time high of $4,400. Between the ETH upgrade, Bitcoin climbing to 44K and beyond, and Doge nicely anchored around 25 cents, you can see that the entire crypto space is gaining in momentum. It's amazing what two weeks does to change sentiment. On July 19th, we hit rock bottom on most cryptocurrencies. Polkadot, which is another one of my favorite holdings, was trading for just over $10. The coin I bought at that time have now doubled in value. Know what you own, understand its potential, and keep a bit of cash on the side so you can take advantage of these golden opportunities when they present themselves. Not financial advice, I'm simply providing you with my perspective and what I found works. A couple of quick announcements uh, to make before we talk about Tesla. Neo posted its delivery numbers for July, and they came in, you know, pretty much where we expected. So 7,931 vehicles, which represents a 124.5% year-over-year increase. The earning call is scheduled for August 11th. I'll cover my takeaways in a separate video later this week. Also, Virgin Galactic had its earning call this week, uh, that was earlier in the week. They reopened ticket sales at a price of 450 thousand dollars currently working on that video to cover 
it in more details, look for that video to drop on either Wednesday or Thursday. Also, I just had to edit this quick section back in. As I stopped at the supercharger in Perry, Oklahoma, I found this. Of all the places I thought I would find a Bitcoin ATM, Subway, and look at that. Bitcoin ATM. That's pretty cool. This is why I'm telling you, crypto is taking over the world. Better buy some crypto. All right, so let's talk Tesla now. Following a record-breaking Q2 earning report last week, the stock managed to push above $700 for the first time in months, before closing just below that level on Friday. Seeing that I spent the week in Texas, in the Dallas area, Giga Texas is only a few hours drive away from where I was, and I decided that I had to make the trip. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. I thought it'd be cool to see the factory before it was completed for the full before and after effect. So, got on the road, got going, and it was definitely worth the drive. And I will say that no matter how many pictures and aerial drone YouTube videos you see, it won't prepare you for the scale of this factory. It is massive. Like, massive, massive. It does take a minute to drive past the factory before you hit the highway exit. I'll admit that when I pulled up, I was expecting a welcome center, right? Especially since they have this nice little welcome to Giga Texas sign as you pull onto the factory grounds. Turns out it is private property, which by the way makes sense. I'm not sure why I expected anything less. Uh, and you can't actually stop, park, or take pictures officially. Now the on-site security is nice enough that they'll let you caravan through, snap a few pics and videos as you drive through. Overall, I'm glad I went. Gave me a chance to discover Austin and check out the awesome design studio they have there. My dad enjoyed the road trip and got to check out the Model Y. Pretty sure he'll be joining a Tesla family at this point. I kind of wanted to save some of that dirt caked on the car uh, for, uh, from visiting the factory, but figured that would be a bit too much. A couple of noteworthy news dropped this week from analysts um, covering Tesla. The first one comes from Alex Potter from Piper Sandler after his review of the Tesla 10Q filing post-earning call. As a reminder, he has a $1,200 price target on Tesla. The note released on August 3rd states that nothing fishy pops up and automotive margins were impressive past anyone's scope of prediction. Even more impressive is that Tesla could recognize $1.3 billion in self-driving software within the next 12 months. I would not be surprised given how impressive the system already is with more improvements on the way. The second one that comes to mind is from KGI Securities analyst Jennifer Liang, who initiated coverage on Tesla this week with an outperform rating, which is equivalent to a buy, and an $855 price target based on technological superiority. The last thing I'll give you here from my perspective is this. You may look at Tesla stock price right now and think to yourself, it's already too high. Well, consider this. Had you invested $1,000 in August of 2011, it would now be worth $130,466.91. Over the same period of time, the SP500 gained 250% and Gold gained just over 5.5%. Now the kicker is Tesla is expected to grow at 50% year over year till 2030. Something to think about. Personally, I'm still buying. Okay, so let's switch over and talk weekly portfolio performance expressed in percentage gain or loss. At the lowest point this week, I was down by 3.35%, primarily due to the slight delay to the London fork. Uh, they delayed it by a day um, and it was supposed to be on the 4th, but went live on the 5th. Once the date of the 5th was confirmed, the positive momentum resumed. The sharp spike that you see almost perfectly coincides with the announcement of the 5th. The whole crypto space has been on the rise this week, helping lift my portfolio by as much as 12.63% at the top, before it eventually settled at 8.76% for the week. I do expect a bit of a retrace as people take profit from the most recent rally. That said, at the current rate, the account should be touching a new all-time high in the coming months. So that's pretty exciting and something to look forward to. Definitely glad I took advantage of the significant pullback we experienced during the crypto market downtrend. 
This is precisely why it is important to tune out the short-term noise and focus on the long-term trend. But with that, this will do it for today's video. I'll be back next week with my regular format. Hopefully you enjoyed the content and found it insightful. And if so, please drop the video a like as it greatly helps the channel grow. For my newcomers, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future content. Thank you for watching. Stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.